it's our own self-belief it's our own belief in what we have internally and when we break through that and go do you know what i'm not worried about what other people will think now you have to remember it's about do no harm to no one do no harm to no one's property and walk a life of you know being honest authentic ethical as well but it's also saying i'm not frightened to speak out i'm not frightened to do something if it fails okay because as I fail, I will learn and I will come back to it. Just a little taster of what is coming up on the show. But first, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. And also tell your friends and family about this podcast. Please let us know in the comments if you would like to hear any particular topic in relation to sleep or health. Then I will create a show especially for you, just for asking the question. So let's get on with the show. Welcome everybody back to another Empowering Family Health podcast episode. Today on the show, I have another incredible guest. As always, I have Joe Dalton in the house let me read out Joe Dalton's bio before I bring him in. Joe Dalton, I'm really excited about this episode, folks. This is going to be really, really <clears throat> empowering with lots of great nuggets, believe you me. So Joe is an expert and a trusted advisor. He's a coach and he is a consultant and he specializes in helping business owners and entrepreneurs transform, transform their approach to life and business in a way that is so unique and powerful. And his goal is not just to help people, but to change lives. And his gift is seeing what is possible, even when you can't see it for yourself. And then helping you turn those dreams into reality. And Joe is also the host of uh, an award-winning radio program, Breakthrough Brands on Dublin South FM. And he's had incredible guests on his show, like Marissa Peer and Greg Braden and lots of other high-profile people on the show. So, Joe, I am really excited to dive into this conversation. Today, we're going to be talking all about how to be free of self-talk that puts people down, really keeping people trapped and not been able to express and really show up in life as who they truly are. So I'm really excited. So come on in and say hello to everybody, Joe. You're very welcome. Oh, delighted to be here. Yes, uh, I love that intro. Um, love sharing my information with people. And yes, uh, you know, doing radio as well for you know five years now. And as you know, the chairman of Dublin South FM, I love when the table has been turned and yeah. someone else then is interviewing me. It's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I so I'm honoured, honoured to be here today. Great, and I'm really, you know, Joe. I've, I've, um, I've been watching you, um, you know, and listening to your podcasts. And my God, they are powerful. And, you know, some of the information that you have to share with the world. And you can tell that you're so passionate about this whole area, so passionate about helping people and, you know, and, and with no agenda. You know, this, this is what I love about you, Joe. You're so unique and genuine that you want to really help people to to be powerful human beings because you can see the possibilities. And I love that you can see the possibilities in people even when they can't see it themselves. And there are so many of us going around that can't see that. So we'll dive into that in a minute. But first, Joe. Can you give us a little bit of background about yourself, maybe why you're so passionate about this area, why you fell into this this whole area? Well, I, you know, started off in business and sales. At, you know, I knew at 13 that I wanted to get into sales. It, it excited me. <laughs> yeah, it excited me. And I kind of went, oh, my God, I'm using my voice and talking to people and realized that there was something here that was flowing and was so natural. Um, then I, I i realized when i was about i think it was about 19 i got into doing programming ms dos uh, which most people would know you know the black Snap. and white green screen yeah mm -hmm. and i remember him being in college and writing the programs and the lecturer talking to me going look you do this and this pops up and i went so if i sit here all day and do this this will happen and he said excitingly yes and i went no <laughs> not 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 for me and sort of turned my back on it and went out and ended up working abroad for 10 years, having uh, an agency in Germany. And then from there, I was in the States for about two years and 
then I was here and then I was in England and England that was and then in and out of England for about eight years with another business as well so I've worked in the motor trade I've worked in I've worked in software industry I've you know I've had my own gym I created a gym uh, had I've had a genetics company which was a DNA fitness and athletic ability wow. um so I've had multiple of, and all fading back to where I started you know 18 was office equipment and so knocking on doors and cold calling and and enjoyed it so I've always been a people person I've always interested in sales and marketing and growing business especially with running companies but the one thing that always led me to understand that life was meant to be easy and a lot of people struggle and the other thing that I saw always looked at it was that sales is so important to us even though a lot of people don't like selling it but when you go down into the depths of it there's actually more behind the scenes mm. and what's more behind the scenes is the confidence and the language that people are using when trying to present or offer that that can be used in so many different ways to show how authentic they are to show the passion that they have for other people then to buy in to the belief that they have so i sort of looked at that and looked at how a person can live their life and have work-life balance to be able to thrive survive and live a life of freedom uh joe that is just music to my ears and you know just listen share i didn't i didn't i didn't know half of what you what you've done and experienced in your life and you know you really do have an entrepreneurial mind and you mentioned you're a people person as well, which is a gift to have, you know, because I think to be successful in life and, you know, when we talk about success, it means something different to everybody. But to be successful in life, there's one thing I believe that we have to have, and that is good communication skills. And there's a lot to say about communication skills, how we relate to people and really um, be able to listen to other people as well, really listen to what it is that they want and need. Tell us a little bit more. So, so you you were able to identify, you know, when you talk about sales, right? So, we're entrepreneurs, and I'm an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur, and a lot of the audience listen to to this show are entrepreneurs as well, especially mothers. Um, so, so entrepreneurs, we all sell, right? We every everybody sells to some extent, but as you say, there's something that blocks us from being effective at selling. So, can you bring us through maybe what's there for people? Um, and, and how can we unravel this and, and find out what it is that's because it's unique for everybody I think belief you know wow. over the years I have understood that everyone suffers from one thing and the one thing that holds us all back in our business so if say you were people that you're dealing with are solo entrepreneurs and they're trying to figure out how they can grow their business so everyone has a great idea so let's put that as a pillar you know and a great product and then we and have a river mm. and then we have a river and on the other side of that river we have all our customers and like, hey, hey, hey. and we're trying to everyone's trying to build that bridge between what we have over to the people okay yeah. so the one thing in the normal years and all the sales and all the marketing and all the business consultancy and everything it's our own self-belief it's our own belief in what we have internally and when we break through that and go do you know what I'm not worried about what other people will think. Now, you have to remember it's about do no harm to no one, do no harm to no one's property and walk a life of, you know, being honest, authentic, ethical as well. But it's also saying I'm not frightened to speak out. I'm not frightened to do something if it fails. OK, because as I fail, I will learn and I will come back to it. So there's this couple of elements. There's three different types of business and one is is the solo entrepreneur and that's the person who's trying to get business and they have that little bit of that anxiety and the stress trying to get business then you have the level two which are people who are getting business in but are trying to upscale so they're feeling that little bit of pressure mm. and then you have the people that are getting business in they have teams and everything's in work and under the top you know ceo or the owner they're feeling a massive amount of pressure more pressure than they've ever experienced because all these people are relying on them yeah now let's jump back to the solo entrepreneur the person that's trying to drive their business there's three things that you need to look at if you want to drive your business one is as i say i call it how to 
So that is finding out all that information and learning knowledge, wisdom, right? And when you get at it, the next thing is taking action. So how to plus action, okay, equals results. So taking action is getting all the stuff that you do, implementing it, and then that gets you closer to your action, which is your possibilities. Now, the more knowledge you get, if you don't implement it, the possibilities and action gets further away. Just okay. But if you keep on getting all that knowledge and then implementing it, taking action, then you get closer to the result. However, part of that learning process is, is knowing that you're speaking to the right people yeah. and knowing that your audience are the people that you're working with. So you could be great. You could be speaking to say, doctors and you're trying to sell everything to doctors but you realize that doctors don't eat dog food you you know so you can oh man i need to then so it's about testing and everything that revolves about is research so there's three elements that you need to have one is that you need to clarity in what you do and when you have full clarity on what you're doing that builds confidence and when you build confidence that brings conviction into your day-to-day process oh i love that word conviction that's very powerful isn't it that's like unstoppable yeah yeah and the more clarity you have there's something in the ether that actually changes that things happen because you're connecting and you're being very clear because when you're clear you know the source or you know your awareness actually drives you into okay this is where we're going but if you're in muddy water and you're trying this and you're doing that it's like rolling around in a, in a boat with no compass in the fog in Dunleary harbor and you're lost and you don't know where you're going <laughs> that's a that's a great analogy i love i love that um joe because you know so many of us are going around and we're you know marketing and all this and, and i love what you said about the message and being clear and knowing who your audience is because so many of us are selling something and we're putting the message out there but it's it's hitting everywhere and when it hits everywhere, it's it's hitting no one really because you're not bringing it down into that niche or identifying who it is that you want to give that message to. And then you know, um, when we don't have that clarity, as you say, we're 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 all over the place. We're we're not effective in what we're doing because we're not speaking to the right people, and then they're not hearing us. Um, and and I love what you say about the confidence as well because it really helps to raise the vibration when we're when we're vibration is and we know we know exactly what it is that we're doing we we have it we're clear with our intention and we know exactly what it is that can make our raise our vibration get us excited so that we're really convicted then and we we have then our passion is formed and and we're, we're just so engaged in what it is that when we know what we're going to do and this is where we get the results yeah and it's about that vibration and you know i've learned that it's no longer raising your vibration but it's actually finding your own vibration um and back in 2019 i did a ted talk which was about um being consciously aware and it was about the external stuff and the internal stuff and you're looking at say we're talking about people that are trying to make a living so say you you have someone that are earning under a hundred thousand a year okay and they're trying to get the business up so that could be someone that's struggling making forty thousand or whatever mm. there's a thing that happens to most of us in business and that is we not we don't get anxiety but we get anxious so what the anxious is that it builds up and most people are trained or believed when something like comes that do they push it away i don't know if we're recording on video here or is it just audio so i'm putting my hands up so i'm pushing that away and because we don't really want to let it into our head but we know it's there and then what happens when you have a dam when you're pulling up it builds and it builds and the pressure and pressure and then that it's turns into, that ang- into anxiety mm. and what happens is when that's happening it's getting worse and worse and worse and it builds so much that people then let it in and they Can't the anxiety that. comes in and just go oh my god and they break oh, down wow. and the stress and everything but mm-hmm. the best thing is when that's hitting them yeah. let a breath go <sighs> breathe out take down your hands and let that flow through your body because all it is is energy now energy cannot be destroyed energy has to be directed to somewhere else so what comes in you let the breath and you accept it and you let it flow through you and when you flow through it it loses its power mm. and loses its resistance mm. and what you're doing is it's a sweep into you're going do you know what 
I've got this. This has come through. I'm letting it work through me. And because I'm letting it come through, I'm starting to come up with ideas, solutions that I can actually address to help me move forward instead of me thinking about how am I pushing this off? How am I going to fight this off? Because it's taking away your energy from you being productive as well. Yeah, you're using up all your energy to stop this thing, but it's inevitable. It's there. It's there. And with the resistance, it, it just drains everything from us. And I love what you said about just letting it in because it can just flow through you if you can add it be because energy moves and energy is motion and it does move through you. But if we keep resisting, we're keeping it there and we're using up all our own energy and it's making us sick. It's making us very, very sick. Actually, there's a lot of illnesses, you know, over the years and people have done this for years, um, this way of being. And, and they do end up with a lot of illnesses as a result, because we do know that the it has chemical responses in the body. Yeah, like, it's, it, you know, even it affects your sleep. And as you know, sleep is one of the key things that we need. You know, when we're asleep, our body is working on repairing itself or whatever it needs. And, you know, that sleep is important. And then that affects the stress. And there's all the different elements of our life that we can either look at killing us or helping us. And that's yeah. why at the very beginning when I was talking, I says, I've learned over the years that there is a part of business which is about the mindset now i've identified six elements that every business should have and i've looked at the likes of tony robbins and i've looked at marshall goldsmith and i've looked at all these and i've interviewed a lot of people like this as well so i've i've interviewed over 200 300 people through the different shows that i've had so that's a loss. i kind of kind of went okay what makes someone successful and what are the elements that they're touching on so i came up with six points touch points that every business should have so if you're if people are listening to this the six touch points are one is identify and that's identifying you and your purpose and your quality and all the authentic stuff about you because that's what really you bring to the table when you're coaching or mentoring or running a business and passion then it's going to the market. So the second element is create. And that's going to the market and asking the market and doing your research and creating your what you've identified about you and creating something that the market needs. Because needs. Mm, you have to be aligned with, with, do, yeah. with who you are, yeah. Mm. And then the third one is package. And package is pricing, offer, irresistible, free offers, you know, the, the whole madness. element of whatever it is. So that's that part and then it's getting to the next part is promote promote is how you come to the table do you know the industry language what makes you the expert what element or what platform or whatever whatever way you want to promote it but it's aligning yourself up that you're the go-to guy person mm. and then the next part is selling now we'll touch on selling where everyone goes i hate selling i'll tell you now do you know if you don't like selling you have a hobby uh, right yeah uh, yeah yeah and selling is let's take i used to say to people if you don't like selling say helping right and i'm sort of reversing back on that this you know because we can change our mind but what i want people to do is instead of thinking of selling i want to get into conversational selling and conversation selling is when you're meeting someone you're interested in the business you said it it's about listening it's about asking questions. So you ask the right questions to get that people to build reports so you understand our business. Yeah. And then in when you are having that conversation with people which you are authentically interested in what they have to say, then you are seeing that if their business and your business is a match, and then it's offering them a solution, it's conversation selling. And then when you get, that's the five points, right? And the sixth point then is upscaling so when you get you know identify create package promote and selling right they're all lit up then you can actually go into upscaling and grow the business forward in on it mm, that, that's massive i love what you said about selling and listening and what i could hear in that joe was it's really all about being over there with the person and less about you because people, you know, the, for some entrepreneurs where they get it wrong is I have to make this sale. I have to make money. 
and as we can we can have a whole conversation about money and money blocks but we need to be over there with the client and identify what it is they really need and want by asking those questions yeah and most people believe that marketing is from getting people to know who you are to getting them to have a sales conversation and it's not Mm. marketing is about how the person feels and acts after they have gone through the whole process of being with you wow so we have to look at what we do and how we can change those people's lives okay and then work backwards yeah yeah i really hear you it's it's very different than the way we've been wired and what we have been been doing um but really it's 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 all about that that the other person then and and what it is that that they need and when you then find how that person feels and acts of after them being with you right so they've they've gone through the process they bought the product or they've done the coaching or whatever it may be then you can put in your guarantees and your guarantees are then leverage to make that person move forward so when you mm. know that deep mm. down inside that you can really really help this person if they follow your simple easy formula or steps or whatever it may be then you can put in your guarantees because you're standing right behind your product and going i can guarantee this That's and that then builds strength and that builds you know we're talking about remember we clarity confidence and conviction so it's all building into it it's yeah like everything into a big bucket and mixing it around oh my god and out comes all these success stories yeah it sounds incredible it makes so much sense though you know like when we come from that place you know of um really listen to the person but what i can also hear is is being there with no judgments because um the minute we have judgments um we're making the other person wrong and then the other person's going to start being defense. And I hear this in so many conversations. So we really need to have compassion, I think. Is that an element that you'd consider as well? Yeah, well, compassion is so important. You know, there's that we talk about empathy, you know, and, you know, it's you know, people go, oh, you have to empathize. You have not sympathy, but empathy. And yeah, big you difference. Know, there's a big, huge difference. You know, yeah. sympathy is, oh, thank God that didn't happen to me. Empty, God bless you. But compassion is, I oh, understand. And, you know, compassion is something that unfortunately some, some people have to learn to, to understand and to have it in their life. And once you have that compassion and understanding that this other person is an equal, you're not better than them. They're not better than you. It's understanding. And if you are genuinely trying to help them, then you're doing a great job. I was doing an interview with a, 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 someone in America the, the other week, and I said to him, I said, look, the one thing that you should do and all your clients should do is actually, before you go out and do your day's work, say, if I don't contact someone, if I don't reach out to someone, if I don't talk to someone mm. i am doing them a great injustice because yeah. i'm not showing them how i can help them how i can change their life so if i don't do any of that i'm actually failing failing them yeah and what most people do in business they write loads of content they you know they post stuff up they reach out to people on linkedin and they reach out to people on facebook and they stop there and 90 percent of businesses out there do something the first part of everything really well but they don't go three four five six and the yeah. ones that go three four five six are the ten percent so would yeah. you rather be in the 90 percent or would you rather be in the ten percent yeah yeah following the true yeah absolutely that, the that's true. yeah how so how do we when we're having that conversation what kind of things do we say to people you know because coaching at the end of the day and when we talk about sympathy and empathy we're not doing the work for the person we have to help them identify what it is that they want where where their issues are i don't even like that word issues but what they're struggling with and on what it is that they want and because people don't know what they don't know right the, the, the blind spots as we call them right and you helped them to identify these things that they can't see so how do you do that like is there a particular way or certain questions i know questions is very powerful that's what coaching does but what kind of powerful questions would you would you ask your clients to help them identify what it is that they're struggling with well the first is you know asking them what's working 
you know, asking them <laughs> what's not working. Yeah. You know, and then it's looking at what's working. And then you can actually, depending on the size of the organization, you can actually go, okay, so if this is working, what resources and what are you doing that makes this work? And maybe in that department, that can be implemented into other different departments. But if it's a solo entrepreneur, it's asking the questions again, what's working, what's not working? Why is that not working? What have you tried in the past to get it to work? So it's teasing out those questions. But as you're teasing out, you're listening to the language. And most people, when you get into a conversation, you're picking up stuff. So you're, they're being authentic and you're yeah. picking them up and you're understanding. Yeah. But when they try to relay that online or in their writing or in their other stuff, it falls apart yeah. because they're doing writing something else or they're producing something else because they want to be intelligent. Yeah. They're ex intelligent. So they're not actually expressing yeah. their, their thoughts and then relaying that on paper or in their message that they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I really get that, Joe. When people are really aligned and, and fully expressed and they're, they're authentic and all these blocks, you know, and look, we life happens and it gets in the way all the time, but it's how we deal with it every day, like, you know, but, but, um, when we are truly aligned, it, it shines. I mean, it is so conv convictive, like, you know, like that word again, you know, it's so obvious that they're really aligned and passionate with what they're doing when they're aligned with that. Um, but they're doing a great job and they have to give themselves a pat on the back and say, you know, if things aren't working out, you're allowed to hit a big red button, e hit it and reset. Love it. You have to reset all the time. If you know, no That's one. Very important. In this world, reset. Eh, okay, I've screwed up. This isn't working. Let me go back and see how I can fix this. I'm going to reset. When I say reset, you look at the thing. What can I do right now in this moment and time to fix things? So if you are a mother at home, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working in an organization, it doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing, you're allowed to kind of go, I'm having a shit day, okay? I need to just reset because if I hit that reset button, it takes the pressure off me and I move forward. Oh, Kids, so everything, family, whatever it may be, take that moment, hit the button and start again. I love it because we're so we're so hard on ourselves, Joe. Like we never give ourselves a break. We're always telling ourselves that little voice in the head sitting on the shoulder all the time saying you're not good enough and you should have done it this way. And what the hell are you doing? And who do you think you are? And it just eats us up and it ke keeps that imposter syndrome going. And we, we're not in that place of conviction as long as that's there. But I think it's really important to identify that. And I tell people, Joe, as well, that when you can identify that voice in your head telling you all these things is to use it to your advantage to listen to it, right? And then to turn it around because there's obviously something there that's causing this voice to say those things. So have that conversation with that little voice in your head. It sounds a bit mad, but you know what? You know, to tease it out because there's obviously something there underneath on a deep level that's that's going on. And I love, you know, give yourself a break, but also reward yourself and celebrate when you do achieve things to, to really, you know, because we don't do that either. You know, whenever I, you know, do something well, um, I'll go down and get myself a mocha. Now, it's only something small. Now, I do plan holiday trips and all that, bigger things as well. But I think it's so important to reward yourself, to acknowledge yourself. Yeah, I would agree. Um, one of the groups that I work with, we got them to every, once a week, no matter what it is, to celebrate a win. Because what happens is people set goals and when they reach those goals, they don't celebrate the win. They just keep moving forward. So everything is always oh, a slog. Yeah. But if you go, OK, you know, it's like we're working on webinar and we're improving the webinar every week, you know, when we're learning from it. So every week we, you know, we celebrate on that webinar was awesome and it was better than the week before and next week webinar is even going to be better and the one after that is going to be awesome yeah. but it's celebrating those 
processes to get it to be the way that you want it to be. So yes, yeah, you're spot on there. Celebrating yeah. is. And I think present. bringing a bit of fun into it as well and playing, playing with it, you know, bring that childlike energy because we're, we're adults too many of the time, you know, too much of the time. And like, even though we're entrepreneurs now, we're, we're a mommy, we're a sister, we're a friend, we're all these other roles as well. And we need to be able to take that hat off every so often, you know, and take a break from that role, you know, because even as a mother, I had this conversation with someone the other day and, um, you know, I'm a mother myself and I had it that I was a mother 24 seven, but, but I don't want to be a mother 24 seven to get me. And uh, it was such freedom in that, you know, <laughs> now I love being a mother and all the rest, you know, but sometimes I'd, I just want to be a child and go off and ride a bike or climb a mountain or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know, for me with, with young kids as well, I says, I just love one. I just, when they grow up, and I, I can go out for a meal with my wife without yeah, organizing all the crazy <laughs> stuff or, you know, it's walking out of the house and there's not a big shouting match and a fight and all. And yeah, it's, I think it's people just need to be kind to themselves. You know, it's the whole thing about the exterior world has made us believe we should act and do one thing. And if people realize that the external world is only you know make believe that the most important thing is within and if you actually just then develop that inner compass with yourself ignoring yeah. the outside because you know the it's outside way too world, much influence on us doesn't yeah. it when you let the outside world the outside world has believed us that everything is comfort but in the end are we giving up freedom for comfort and all you need to do is just kind of go, okay, I am me. The external stuff doesn't really matter. Like we don't watch TV here in the house anymore. Or <sighs> we watch, you know, we've maybe we've Netflix on, which we'll watch maybe a couple of shows on the weekend, but during the week I don't watch it because it was just affecting my consciousness. It was, yeah. you know, it's so. And there's programming in those things on TV too, folks. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all subliminal messaging and, all the, the you know to keep, keep that you know keep you in that i saw that holding pattern like you're flying around an airport to play it yeah. and it's about breaking free and just being you and yeah. if you can just go you know what i am who i am and i'd love myself and i'm proud of it yeah i love myself yeah. oh yeah. my god how many people can say that like look in the mirror and say do you know what i love myself yeah really genuine i'm doing i'm showing up as best as can, best i can i'm not perfect but you know what? I love myself. That is just a powerful thing, isn't it? As as my wife says, she'd love to be inside my head. Uh, she said, you know, whatever phases you or gets to you. So things do, but I, I learned to catch them early and yeah. let them the go. Practice. Through, but yeah. Yeah. the practice isn't it yeah. joe we're coming to the end right i could talk to you all day you're just so inspiring and i love because we talk about you know entrepreneurial life but it's also our personal life as well and family life and i'm very passionate about family and i'm very passionate about <clears throat> our children you know because as parents and entrepreneurs and teachers you know we are influence and we are creating a world for our children as well and and i know you're very passionate about children you have children yourself and, and you spoke about that environment and um, i think home is the place that we really need to create a, a safe environment for our children to be able to express themselves and we talked all about you know judgments and you know being free to be yourself self-expressive and this this also comes into the into the home as well and for our children um i just wanted to say that because that's something i'm very passionate about and i believe you are too yeah it's it's about the home as your dwelling you are the authority and it's making sure that whatever goes on in that external world that you know let your children know that this place your dwelling is a safe zone for them so no matter what's going on in the world you mm. actually then can actually go and you can actually then go and say, look, you can run here. No matter what's going on in that external world, this world is safe for you. That's what yeah, you they can, to, yeah. they can yeah. be. They can yeah. show up as themselves there. That's yeah. massive, Joe, because there's a lot of challenges with children now and teenagers. Um, and, and, it's, and they're going to be our next entrepreneurs as well, Joe. So listen, mm -hmm. Joe, any last empowering thoughts that you want to share with the audience before we leave? Yeah, the, the, the one thing that I would say to everybody is just stop. Take a look at what you have. 
be grateful for what it is. I know that might be hard, but then just going to go, okay, you know, what do I need to do next? And smile. Oh, That's- oh my God, Joe, that is powerful. And everybody has the power to do that. And I think practice in it often and it will get easier and easier. And uh, and I really hear that you live by those words as well, Joe. So, Joe, it's been incredible, um, educational, inspiring, lifting, moving. Uh, I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. And I want to thank you, Joe, for who you're being in the world as well. So have a wonderful day. Yeah, definitely. And look, if someone wants to reach out to me, they can catch me at joedalton.ie and happy to have a chat with them. As Forgot well. to ask you that. Yeah, your, your website, Brendan. And we put all that in the show notes as well, Joe. That's fantastic. Great talking to you. Take care. Okay, bye. Take care, Joe. Take care. I do hope you are enjoying these conversations and to help me continue putting these videos and audio podcasts together, I do have an ask. I do need support to help me to keep bringing you knowledge and insights. There is a Patreon link, patreon.com forward slash empowering family health, or you can make a donation via PayPal. All the links are in the description and the pinned comment. You can do a one-off or you can do a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Take care.